Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I want to walk you guys through the Paycheck Protection Program 2 application. Yes, I'm talking about the PPP loan application. They did release it. I think we're still technically waiting on a little more information um, since I haven't really seen lenders actually rolling out the application. I first time around the first round, I went through Cabbage and you know, they pretty much were like, here's the application, go through, you know, and it was the same difference. It was the same thing, but you would just do it through them. And uh, so I haven't really seen that yet, but the SBA, the Small Business Administration, did roll out the Paycheck Protection Program round two loan um, application in which you can see it right here, where if we click it, download, it's gonna open up in a new window and we get a look at it right here and you can actually go through it and complete it step by step, which is what I'm gonna do for you guys in this video, just to help guide you, show you what I would do um, for me in my particular situation. Again, this is not, you know, I'm not a CPA, I'm not a financial advisor, um, and, and you know, this is for entertainment purposes. Uh, so really quickly, as you can see up in the top left corner, you would select one of these, whichever your situation is. Again, this video is really um, meant for those of you who are self-employed, um, the, the question some of you guys are probably going to have is, well, you know, am I eligible self-employed individual? Do I do independent contractor or sole proprietor? What do I do? Um, and I'll probably make a video diving on this more. Maybe I'll do that. I'll do a separate video diving on which one of those uh, specifically would probably be most relevant for you. For me in particular, I'm doing sole proprietor. Uh, but you might even have a registered business where it's an LLC or S Corp or, and whatnot. Um, so that's going to be based on your particular situation. For me, it's a sole proprietor. Um, my business legal name is going to be my personal name. DBA or trade name is a doing business as, which for me, it's Adam Helper. That's my business name that I do business under. Um, or I go under my government name, um, which is the business legal name, which is what you would probably do if you don't have a DBA. Next up is business address. <clears throat> and the business address, most likely if you're self-employed, generally will be your home address. If you are someone who is part of the gig economy, you work with Uber, not for Uber, um, you know, you just have a contract with them in which they are not your uh, business you would not put Uber's headquarters address here. You would put your personal home address because you are basically the business. So we're just going to say it's one, two, three, four. Then you're going to do your business, um, either I employee identification number, which, you know, that's, that probably be something, if you have a DBA, you, you probably have an EIN. Um, if you, don't have a DBA, you probably don't have an EIN, um, or you might still have an EIN, but you would know if you have it. If you don't, you would use your social security number. Um, I'll just throw in a, a random uh, EIN number, which I think it's something like, something like that. <clears throat> then you would put your business phone number, not your personal. I mean, mo it may be your personal phone number. Again, if you are a independent contractor and whatnot, and you don't have a DBA, you don't have an EIN, um, there's a good chance you probably don't have a business separate phone number, but um, uh, there's also a chance you might still have that business phone number. Then you're gonna throw your primary contact. Again, if you're self-employed, it's gonna be you, most likely. Um, uh, this would probably be more relevant if you have an LLC, an S Corp, C Corp partnership and so on. And you're gonna do your email address, <clears throat> Again, this would be your like your business email address, but if you don't have it and you are self-employed and it's just you under your name, you're going to use your personal address. So let me say, all right, so now this is the thing that I think a lot of people are going to be kind of like, what do I do? How do I figure out my average monthly payroll? Well, first, the average monthly payroll formula here is going to be based on your 2019 um, Schedule C form with uh, the information you did. So when you did your taxes last year, a year ago from now, you know, maybe it was probably a little less because I'm sure a lot of you guys, you know, waited until the deadline. <laughs> maybe not. Um, and peep the water bottle, my friends. I'm, I, I was given this, I was gifted this. And uh, this is a, as you can see, it says a Vitz can water bottle. Oh, 
I love this thing. This thing is a beast. I love the way it like the lid and stuff locks down on it. You just pop it open. Yeah, got to stay hydrated. Which is one of my uh, 2021 uh, resolutions. I got to drink more water than what I did last year. All right. So when you want to determine the average monthly payroll, you're going to basically do a little basic math. You're going to use your tax returns. You're going to grab the Schedule C form. And on the Schedule C form is line 31, which is your net profit um, or loss. Um, and uh, basically that number is how much money you made for the whole year um, in profit, how much you actually got to put in your pocket. Um, and uh, to then determine the average monthly payroll, you're going to take that number and divide it by 12. So let's say on your Schedule C form, pulling up my calculator, or maybe I'll pull up this one over here so you guys can see me do the math. All right, so we're going to pull up the calculator and do some basic math right here. So let's say your Schedule C form says you made, um, I don't know, uh, $40,000 in the year. Okay, so, you know, let's say you were grinding, you worked for uh, a DoorDash or Grubhub or Uber and you you know after you did your deductions and you writ you wrote off whatever expenses you had let's say your profit was forty thousand dollars is what your line one says on your schedule c form so we got forty thousand we're now going to again get our average monthly payroll to determine your average monthly payroll you'll take that forty thousand from your schedule c form what it says on line 31 and you'll divide that by 12 and that will give you three thousand three hundred and thirty three dollars and of course, a lot of threes after that, but we'll just leave it at $3,333, round it down um, and do 3,333. So now that we have our average monthly payroll, $3,333, we're now going to do times 2.5, which is basically like equivalent to two and a half months. And multiply the 2.5 times the 3,333, which again is the Schedule C form, line 31. That means you have to have done your taxes. Um, and it brings you to $8,332. That is the amount that you will add here. Um, and as it does say, plus the EIDL, net of advance. So if you were given an advance from the EIDL, which most of you were probably, if you did do it, the EIDL, then you were probably given one thousand dollars, so you would add, um, uh, you would add that, you know, have that be considered into the the math here when you do it. But since I did not do the EIDL, um, I started to apply for it. But then when I was approved for the pro pay tech, the the Paycheck Protection Program, the PPP, I decided not to move forward with the EIDL, and that this would probably be enough for me in my particular situation at the time. Also, because, you know, the rules have changed a bit. So there's more, um, there's less uh, uh, kind of restriction and you are essentially allowed to collect both this time around. So things are a little different in that regard as well, which would have influenced my decision had I known that that was going to be the situation. I unfortunately did not move forward with the EIDL. So we're going to add the $8,332 right here, $8,332. And um, that is the amount that this loan would be, this, this Paycheck Protection Program grant, this forgivable loan, um, would be worth. That's how much you would be able to get if you were someone who made <clears throat> uh, $40,000, where your average monthly payroll came out to $3,333. This is the amount that you would get. So to complete the application, you would do number of employees. If you are the business owner, and you are self-employed, then that means you are also the employee. So you're going to just write one because it's your business. You are the employee because you're the one out there grinding and putting in that work, but you're also the owner. It's your business. It's under your name. Whether you have a DBA or not, it's going to be your business. Um, so write one. Then we got the purpose of the loan. Select more than one. Um, for me, it would be all three because... I work from home. This is like my office, my studio, as you guys can see, the backdrop, you know, connected to the ceiling. I got this whole area blocked off exclusively for my production work and uh, doing business work. Um, 
So I would use all three because this is my home office in which I write off a small portion of my rent and my utilities, but also payroll because I need to make sure I get paid. Um, so I'll do all three for me specifically. Um, you know, I don't know what would happen if you were to select other, um, you know, if you wrote other and then let's say you, cause fraud, I think to me, my impression of fraud would be if you got this grant and then spent it towards just some other luxury, lavish things or anything irrelevant to your business, I believe that would be considered fraud. Um, in terms of this being a business loan grant to have it forgiven, I think it has to be one of these three things that you use it towards, but I might be wrong. I could be mistaken. This would be something I would suggest contacting the SBA directly and asking because there, some people are like, well, you know, I don't really need it for some of those things, but I do need some new equipment or I do need to, you know, I want to invest it in growth to, to help my business grow and expand, not just maintain. If you do that, you know, you would probably have to select other and you would have to explain uh, computer equipment, um, new, whatever, some sort of device, whatever it might be. I don't think you, I mean, you might still get approved, but I don't think you would, but I could be mistaken. Maybe they would approve you, but then they're saying, hey, we're going to approve you, but you, it's not going to be forgiven and you will have to pay it all back. So I know most people who are interested in this are interested because it's free money, free business money that you do not have to pay back. Um, but some people are in a situation where, hey, maybe they just got some other grant loan money from a local grant from the EIDL and they're good right now where it's like that money can go towards those first three things. But now they're like, well, this is another potential opportunity to get some more money to help my business grow and expand. So something to think about, something to consider contacting the SBA and getting clarification there. If any of you guys have already done that, feel free to comment, leave a, you know, leave your two cents down below as to what you may have done um, <clears throat> in that particular situation with regards to clicking other and writing it. And if you got approved or not, um, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm confident that the fraud aspect would be if you just used it for completely irrelevant business expenses. If it was personal things, a trip, some luxury cars and some other stupid stuff, some glasses, some Oakley's, whatever fancy materialistic stuff you want to spend it on. Um, I'm, I'm sure that would put you in a position where uh, you would be screwed. You would be one of the people I've covered in one of my previous videos on people trying to beat the system and play the game and, and uh, you know, committing fraud. So I don't recommend it. I would say go with one of the first three options you see there. Um, Cause that's what I'm doing at least personally. Next you have list of all owners of a uh, 20% um, or more. This is just me. I don't owner. Again, the employee identification number or the SS, um, your social security number. Um, so in this case, it's weird that it's still saying you can put your TIN, um, your, your EIN here, since up here, they specifically asking for your business. So if you had a business, um, like I have my DBA and I have my EIN, I would think down here, you would have to put the social security number, but um, I guess you can evidently potentially put the same business EIN that you have up there, but I could be mistaken there. I mean, well, no, you know, technically in my situation, the EIN, it goes through my, it's for my DBA, but it's still, connected to me. So I think that's why it would be fine for me to use the same thing. And now we're going to have our uh, address, which again, your business, you know, your business address up here, if you're, if you're self-employed is almost, you know, I'm almost confident to say all of yours will be your home address, which if you're self-employed and not an LLC, not a, a partnership or C Corp and whatnot. Um, you'll probably have that same Oh, uh, you can't copy. Yeah. Um, you'll have that same address, Washington Street. So now we just have some questions. Everything else moving forward, I think, is pretty straightforward. Um, one thing I do want to note. No. So one important thing I do want to really, uh, I want to say quickly, based off of this application, when I read through everything, um, I believe this application is specifically for those of you who are who are applying for the first time. Now, I could be mistaken, but one of the questions down here specifically says. During the period beginning on February 15th, 
and ending on December 31st, the applicant has not and will not receive another loan under the Paycheck Protection Program. So again, it says the applicant has not. So during that period in February 15th through December 31st, the applicant has not and will not receive another loan under the Paycheck Protection Program. So if you have received a loan during last year, 2020, um, and it was the Paycheck Protection Program loan specifically, then you wouldn't be able to mark this. And I don't believe that would make you eligible to move forward with getting your loan approved. So that's why I haven't heard, you know, I saw one other video where someone was kind of talking about this application, walking through it. And I'm like, they didn't even mention that. And it seems like they just marked everything off without actually reading all of these. Because when I read that, I'm like, wait a minute. If you already received it, then you wouldn't use this application. So I, again, we're still waiting for the SBA to roll out more finalized information since lenders haven't come out with their process to complete the application. That's how you know. There's still more information, more things that I think have to be completely ironed out to allow this to um, you know, take effect and, and get the ball rolling. Um, so I did want to mention that really quickly before we dive in the, into this um, application, but you can still stick around and watch how easy it is to complete this application um, and get some money. So looking at the questions we have, is the applicant or owner of the app, um, applicant presently suspended, um, debarred, per, um, proposed for a debarment, declared ineligible? Basically, they want to know if you um, are on good terms, if you're, you know, do, if you've done things like illegal and you, you're, you know, uh, in the hot seat, you know, they're like, hey, how reliable is this person going to be with giving us our money back in case it is not forgiven? which is understandable. If I lend you money, I want to make sure it's someone that I trust that I can get my money back. So that's all they're doing. Um, has the applicant, any owner of the applicant or any business owned or controlled by any of them ever obtained a direct or guaranteed loan from the SBA or any other? No. Is the applicant or the owner of the applicant an owner of any other business? No. Has the applicant received an SBA economic injury disaster loan between January 31st, 2020 and April 3rd? If yes, provide details, but I did not receive it, so I'm doing no. Question uh, number five, is the applicant, if an individual or an individual owning 20% or more of the equity of an applicant presently incarcerated or for any felony, see, again, they just want to make sure, hey, if you're, if you're incarcerated, nah, they're like, well, again, how likely are you to give us our money back? Um, they're they're going to, they're, they're like, what's, what's going on? So. They're making sure they're, they're marking off all the all the um, questions that need to be asked to help confirm that, you know, help give them more confidence that you're going to pay them back. Within the last five years for any felony involving fraud, bribery, embezzlement or false. No, I have not gotten any felonies. You're going to initial this. We got number seven is the United States, the principal place of residence for all employees of the applicant included in the applicant's payroll calculation above. Yes. And again, they want to make sure you are someone who is a um, uh, uh, here in America um, and, and that you work here, that this is your primarily um, place of business. Um, is the applicant a franchise that is listed in the SBA's uh, franchise directory? You're going to click no. Now we got some more questions. Feel free to read through everything to make sure you fully understand this. Um, I don't want to take too much more time, so I'm not going to read through all that. But then, like I was saying, read through these as well, because when I was reading this, I watched one other video, um, someone that was, you know, sometimes people want to be first to do it, which this came out and they were like, oh, I want to be first to get this out, made a video on it. And, you know, I watched it and they didn't even touch on this important part here about this being for this application basically being for people who have not received a PPP um, loan already, you know, specifically last year, because that's the time frame it says. Um, so, you know, I'm glad I, I didn't, it wasn't like just trying to be quick to be the first one to get it out and miss some important information like this, that you guys would have then put yourself in a position that disqualifies you because you've lied and, uh, you know, of course, we don't want to do anything illegal, break the law and, you know, jeopardize ourselves and our business and, the, you know, what we've already gained and, you know, what we're trying to do. So um, 
one important thing here, it asks, the first thing is the applicant was in operation on February 15, 2020 and had employees for whom it paid salaries and payroll taxes or paid independent contractors as reported on forms 1099 miscellaneous. The date, because I've heard different things regarding dates, and this is saying February 15th is the date that your business essentially has to have been in operation by. I thought they updated it and changed the date, but maybe not. Um, um, oh, and maybe I'm mixing up the EIDL because there's so many different loans and grants, local grants too, that I've been covering. Um, but at least we're seeing it right here. Your small business, if you are an independent contractor who is working with, I don't know, DoorDash and Grubhub and stuff, and you started prior to February 15th, I think you're going to be better positioned to be qualified for this grant because if you started after February 15th, you wouldn't be able to mark your initial here. And that, I think, would disqualify you from getting approved for this Paycheck Protection Program uh, grant or loan, but forgivable, you know, forgivable loan. Um, so current economic uncertainty makes this loan request necessary to support the ongoing operations of the applicant. You're going to write your initials there. The funds will be used to retain workers and maintain payroll and other utilities that are so again that first question asked about employees for whom it paid salaries and down here it's asking about again payroll you are your employee of your own business because you are the business it is your business you are self-employed but you are the business <clears throat> again i'm trying to <clears throat> again i'm trying to um help you guys get this understanding and this belief and um you know mentality of acting like a business presenting yourself like a business and operating like a business which means knowing how much money is coming in how much money is going out knowing you know kind of projections potentially um what you might be able to anticipate making next quarter um next year you know different things like that those are some of the things that i'm going to continue to focus on here on my channel helping other self-employed entrepreneurs independent contractors freelancers and so on that's why i'm doing all of this content because it all aligns with the the overall agenda of helping other entrepreneurs move forward and do some of the things that i wish i had started doing earlier because i know i would be much further along had i had someone say hey you know when it's time to pay uncle sam at the beginning of the year when you're self-employed, you can actually give him less money and keep a lot of that money in your own pocket if you do these few things. Yeah, so there's a lot a lot more big things to come on this channel that I'm excited for for this year to help you guys with moving forward. But continuing to look at this, as it says, as I understand that loan forgiveness will be provided for the sum of documented payroll costs, covered mortgage interest payments, covered rent payments, and covered utilities, and not more than 40% of the forgiven amount may be for non payroll costs but again if you're self-employed essentially you would just say well i'm going to use the whole thing towards payroll the one thing to keep in mind is that might potentially disqualify you from other loans and grants because sometimes they'll say well what is this grant going to go towards is is if this ppp is going to go all towards payroll then you can't get a grant from somewhere else saying you need it for payroll and that grant from somewhere else might only specifically be for payroll whereas this grant is giving you an option for those three things your your rent mortgage um your payroll or utilities so that's why you probably would want to split it through all you know split it between all three of them which is what i did at the beginning when you saw me probably mark off um right here right there and right there I'm splitting it between all three um and as other programs come out I'll be able to keep my options, you know, more open to, you know, being able to apply to some of those other programs because they might say, well, this is specifically for payroll. And if I already took this one only for payroll, then I would not be able to get some of those other grants and loans. Hope you guys understand that. Hope you guys are following. Um, because again, some of these are those things that other people aren't touching on that I think would be really helpful for you guys to benefit from a lot of these programs that be, that are being rolled out to support us as small and, um, you know, business owners. Um, you know, of course, again, self-employed, independent contractors, freelancers, sole proprietors, but we are under that small business umbrella. So during the period beginning on February 15th and ending on December 31st, this is what I brought up at the beginning, the applicant has not and will not receive another loan under the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, 
again, this is for anyone new to the Paycheck Protection Program that missed it the first time around. If you were someone who did receive this grant already, this loan, then you wouldn't be able to mark this off here. Like you would have to delete that right there and continue to move forward. And I don't believe they would then um, approve you, you know, for it. And that's what I was saying. I think there's going to be more information coming out very soon, um, specifically from lenders that have probably another process, um, another way, or there might be the same contract, but they tweak it and allow it to be utilized for both people seeking um, additional funding who had already received it or someone looking for uh, funding for the first time around. Uh, next up, you have the uh, further certify that the information provided in this application and information provided in all supported documents or forms is true and accurate in all material respects. Again, they just want to make sure you are keeping it 100 and getting you to confirm that everything is legit um, because you don't want to be dealing with any kind of imprisonment, <clears throat> any kind of fraud, any kind of anything, again, that will jeopardize your, your, you know, your whole situation, your small business grind, the hustle, everything you've been working towards. It's not worth it. There's too many. I've, I've made a few videos. I, I could have done a lot of videos on the number of people who have committed fraud, got caught and um, are screwed now. Don't be one of those people. I know, I know it's tempting. I know people are like, well, it's so easy to just, mm. I think the second time around is going to be even you know tougher and more people who try to play the game are going to get caught, um, which hopefully means less people will try to, you know, be slick and, you know, get away with whatever BS, but I do not recommend it, my friends. And then we have, um, lastly, I acknowledge that the lender will confirm the eligible loan amount using required documents submitted. So, you know, they're like, Hey, they just want to see some, some documents saying X, Y, Z, your schedule C form essentially is what they're probably going to request. I think when I initially did it, I might've um, supplied both my schedule C form as well as my regular, my whole tax thing, just as a whole, I might've just been like, here you go. Um, Cause when you're self-employed again, you don't really have all of the same paperwork necessarily that a LLC has. So much easier process for us. And the last thing you're going to do is just write your name here, title. And that my friends is the, step-by-step -step process on how to complete the paycheck protection program to application. Um, you know, I, I, I think uh, a lot of you guys, like I said, missed out the first time around and I'm hoping that you guys are able to get some of this money this time. Everyone knows about the EIDL because they're like, well, it's a free $10,000 grant. Well, you can get potentially a free, you know, $8,332, um, you know, grant uh, free business money that you don't have to pay back with the Paycheck Protection Program. So again, there's a lot of money out there and there's even a lot of local programs where they have rental assistance programs, grants and loans in which I'm trying to cover those. I'm going to be getting back into the mix this week with covering some of those since more funding has been rolled out and more, you know, local states and local cities and whatnot are now getting the ball rolling with uh, with those programs. Um, and, you know, of, of course, like I said, this particular application based off of the questions down here gives me the belief and understanding that this would not be something you would use if you had already received the Paycheck Protection Program uh, grant loan. Um, that said, there should be more information coming out soon because they did say that you would be able to get a second draw in which, you know, maybe I'll make another a, a video specifically on that. Maybe they have already released that information and I just got to dive deeper into that. Um, so I'll look into that for you guys. But if you have any thoughts, any questions, feel free to comment down below. Let us know what the deal is. Hopefully you, you guys who missed out the first time around, if you're part of the gig economy, if you're doing your own thing, hopefully you guys are able to benefit from it this time. Because again, there's a lot of money out there available for small business owners, including us, sole proprietors, independent contractors, freelancers, um, uh, those of us who are self-employed because we are small businesses. We're under that micro um, business, you know, lane, but that's under small businesses. So we should be included in all of these programs and get some of this money that's being rolled out left and right, you know, because the big wigs, they got their money. A lot of these big companies didn't need this money and that screwed us over because we're the ones who really need it. This is who it was supposed to be for. But of course, you know how politics are. We're not talking about that. We ain't getting in that. We staying on this positive note. We staying motivated. We staying focused, not getting distracted by everything going on at the White House and over there. No, no, let them do all that because while people are out there doing this foolishness, 
we can get a better chance to get this money that's being made available. So trying to keep the eye on the prize, that is the goal. Like for me, it's so easy to get tied into politics and drawn into this because I'm very passionate. I care about, you know, my people, my fellow Americans and brothers, and sisters, and being able to see us all move forward where, you know, I know there are things that have helped other groups or specific groups more than others. And being in my position, I mean, look at me, I'm a black man. Um, of course, I'm going to care about, you know, myself and my family and my friends and people that look similar to me in that sense. But I grew up in a place where it was a, a cultural, diversified, you know, community. Well, one one community was, and then I grew up kind of between two different places. But you know, again, that's a video for another day. When it's all said and done, I love everyone. I want to see us all succeed. Um, you know, I'm not about, as Gary Vee says, tearing someone else's building down or whatnot. Um, no, I want to build my empire, but help you build your empire right next door and help him build his empire over there and so on and so on. And that's what I'm doing these videos for. That's what I'm creating this content for, helping us stay motivated, focused. And hey, I'm no guru. I'm no expert. If you guys have any thoughts, any two cents that you want to throw out there that might be helpful when it comes to completing these applications and some of the content I'm creating, comment, you know, leave, leave, leave your thoughts. Uh, because it might be helpful for someone else. It might help motivate someone else a little more than I did or show someone something that I might have missed. So on that note, I'm going to keep it moving. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, I would definitely appreciate it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, definitely subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all of my videos. And um, yeah, you know, keep that ball rolling. Keep the ball moving. Keep it moving, as I like to say. Um, and you guys already know, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.